Jackson State needs a new partner at the dance, and that dance happens to be the Orange Blossom Classic starting in 2024. Because as we know, FAMU has decided to not renew their contract with the OBC, you know, a game that has never featured, never not featured FAMU. But now they need a new partner. And Jack, because Jackson State signed up for at least three more years, from what I'm reading, we're going to talk about three potential partners that I would like to see replace FAMU and OBC. We'll talk about it, whether it makes sense, why some make sense, why some just probably won't happen after the bumper. Stay tuned. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell because we upload all the time. Now, as we came on here and reported probably about a week ago or so, uh, the news broke that FAMU would not renew their contract with the Orange Blossom Classic. They have decided to go in another direction, according to uh, the reports and according to their athletic director, Tiffany Sykes, Don Sykes. And so now, Jackson State, from what I told, I originally thought they weren't. They also were not going to renew their contract with the OBC. But just from what I'm reading on Twitter, from guys that seem to know what they're talking about, it looks like JSU has signed up for three more years at the OBC, that being the Orange Blossom Classic. So they'll play in 24, 25, and 26. And then in 27, it'll start fresh with two brand totally new teams. And so with starting in 2024, JSU, as of now, the Orange Blossom Classic has not announced who will be the new team to replace FAMU. They know FAMU isn't going to play. They're now looking for a new team to replace FAMU. And it sounds like they may have an idea or be in talks with at least one school but they will not uh, they will not release that information until after this year's edition of the Orange Blossom Classic. I'm going to take you now. I don't know where this article came from. I'm going to just be honest, full transparency. I don't know where this came from. Actually, I can read it. It came from the Miami Times online. But I took the screenshot uh, from uh, Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club or Tiger Talk uh, Twitter account. And so this was the snippet of the MiamiTimesOnline.com's article. It says, information on JSU's 2024 opponent will be released publicly once the 2023 Orange Blossom Classic concludes. Replacing a headliner team in the football classic will come with numerous considerations. And so this tweet put up by Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club Twitter account sparked some conversation. You know, some JSU fans were like, yo, you know, we should be like FAMU. We should leave the game. Like, why are we still playing this game? And it led to some interesting dialogue. So here's the one tweet that says the money has to be right, meaning the money has to be right for us to play. All expenses paid, travel, hotel, food, and any other events scheduled outside the game includes band. Payout. Now, they wanted this this person, Heat uh, Vigilante fan, wanted a payout of $1.2 to $1.5 million. Mm, a little steep. Eh, I'm, you know, he ain't getting that. Yeah, ain't getting that. And and someone tells him that in the next tweet that we'll read. But it says payout to 1.2 to 1.5 million for one game, not spread over three years. Uh, you're not getting that. Everybody uh, lining their pockets, but us. Just my opinion. Now, in in Zoe, shout out to Zoe, man. He he correctly, you know, kind of tells them why that what they're asking for just isn't possible. It's just not realistic. It's just not going to happen. Let's be honest. He says, there isn't an FCS versus FCS non-conference game that's paying $1 million anywhere, which is very true. Nobody is paying FCS versus FCS teams over a million dollars apiece. The only time FCS teams get over a million dollars for a game is when they go get curb stomped by Alabama or beat the hell out of by Ohio State or whatever. Like, that's how those things work. That's why they call those money games, because they pay you a million, 1.2, 1.5, but they don't cover anything, but they'll pay you that to come let them get an easy win, non-conference win on their schedule. He said the payout, now he puts, <laughs> it's OBC. The Orange Blossom Classic is going from 450000 in year one, which is next year, year one of their new contract starts in 2024. So 450000 in year one. 500,000 in year two, and then 515,000 in year three. And that's with all expenses paid. That's a, that's a dang good payout. That's really, really good. You're talking about half a million dollars for essentially half a million dollars for three straight years. 
with all your expenses paid in Miami for your team, your coaches, your band, and you get all the festivities that come with the Orange Blossom Classic. It's pretty cool. But what this does, so what Zoe did in this tweet for me, a couple of things, is one, he confirmed that JSU resigned. Two, he confirmed that they resigned for three years. And three, he actually gives us the financials of the actual event. That All of that is critical. So knowing these financials, knowing how good of a payout this is, and knowing that JSU is still a headliner team in this event, it got me to brainstorming. It got me to thinking. It got me to like, yo, who could replace FAMU and have this event never take a drop off? Now, without FAMU, and it's literally called the Orange Blossom Classic, the guys at Jackson call it the Blue Blossom Classic because they've won it every single year since it's come back. Who could replace FAMU in this event? And not allow it to have a drop off, allow it to continue to still have the momentum that it's had over the course of the last three years, even without what's supposed to be the headlining team or the host team in FAMU. And I thought of three schools off the top of my head. Three, boom, just came directly to me. Now, one is probably unrealistic because of certain things, and I'll get into that. And let me let me go ahead and get it to them first. This was the first team that came to my mind. The first team. They came to my mind to replace FAMU in the Orange Blossom Classic was this team right here. It was the Howard Bison. The Howard Bison, for a number of reasons, to replace FAMU in the Orange Blossom Classic. One, Howard travels. Howard has alum everywhere. Howard is probably the most recognized HBCU in the country. They have alums everywhere, famous alums, notable alums, regular alums. People that didn't graduate, famous people that didn't graduate, went to Howard. <laughs> Very notable, like Sean Combs and Ta-Nehisi Coates and, you know, a bunch of people went to Howard. Chadwick Bozeman, Felicia Rashad. They got everybody. And they play in a lot of classic games. That's another thing, too. They play in classics. Howard likes to play in classics. And they're willing to travel, three. Now, and they have a really good and up-and-coming football team. They were, whether you like it or not, they were co miac champions in 2022. They bring back 90% of the starters in 2023. And they're looking to take a MEAC title and represent the MEAC in a celebration bowl this year. So that is a legit team. And I just happen to be rocking a shirt today. But Howard, the Howard Bison came to my mind first. I, I really think Howard versus Jackson State, that would get the people going. That would get the people going. It's two marquee brands. It is two very notable, recognized, and loved colleges with very notable, recognizable, and passionate fan bases. Like, this would be awesome. A1. The problem with Howard is, is that they are in the MEAC. Now, the problem with having it be a MEAC team is that I don't know how the MEAC SWAC challenge and the, the contracts work as far as are they allowed to play in a non-conference game against each other when they have the MEAC SWAC Challenge at the beginning of the season and then the Celebration Bowl at the end of the season? So I don't know. I think that would probably be some kind of conflict, and that's why this probably won't happen. Probably only have a chance of happening because of the MEAC SWAC Challenge, because of the Celebration Bowl. This probably will not take place, but this was the first school that came to my mind and a school that I would have really, really liked to have seen play against Jackson State in the aforementioned Orange Blossom Classic. Now, the second team that came to my mind about playing Jackson State in the Orange Blossom Classic was this school. It was none other. Hold on, hold on, let me see. Let me make sure. Let me go ahead and share my screen. But it was, it was this school. The other. H-U, or some people will say the real H-U, depending on who you are. And that is Hampton. Hampton was the other school. The Hampton Pirates was the other school that came to my mind that I think would be a good matchup. Hampton has had uh, historically had a really good football team. Hampton is no longer in the MEAC. Hampton in the C CAA, I want to say, uh, is a team that I think kind of gets forgotten about because they aren't a part of the two big dogs anymore. You know, for a long time, they were a part of the MEAC. And now that they've uh, they've left the MEAC, they in this latest renaissance of HBCU sports, specifically HBCU football, I feel like certain schools like Hampton kind of get left out and forgotten about simply because they aren't in two of the top dog conferences, that being the MEAC and the SWAC. You know, the MEAC and the SWAC has gotten a ton, a ton, a ton of publicity over the last few years. And schools like Hampton have kind of gotten, you know, kind of gotten forgot about a little bit. 
because they aren't a part of either conference. You know, when when Prime was a part of Jackson State, that gets the whole conference talked about. When Ed Reed almost goes to Bethune Cookman, that gets the whole conference talked about. When the MEAC, when Prime is a part of Jackson State, but the MEAC keeps beating Jackson State in the celebration bowl, that gets both conferences talked about. And so Hampton has has really missed out on a lot of that because they're not a part of an HBCU conference. Getting them for the next three years in the Orange Blossom Classic would do nothing but help this school, would do nothing but help this team, would do nothing but help this program and get Hampton back in the mix of the football game. Get Hampton back in the mix in the talks of the conferences, of the two big dog conferences. So I would like to see Hampton. I think Hampton, you know, they've had some good teams. They've had some really good players come out recently. And Hampton was once, like I said, a real a staple of the MEAC conference. Now that they're no longer a part of the MEAC, they have to fill non-conference games. Why not fill a non-conference game with the very, very potent, competent, really good HBCU opponent? and a team like Jackson State down in Miami in the Orange Blossom Classic. So Hampton was another team that came to my mind that would really be a good, good matchup for Jackson State. But the number one matchup for JSU, potentially, number one potential matchup, the number one must-see matchup, the matchup that I think would get the most viewers, would get the, get the most hype, would have the people most excited about if this game was played without FAMU. The number one team, I think, without question, is this team right here. And, and it, it makes too much sense for it not to happen, so that's why we need to make it happen. It'd be North Carolina a &T. These are the kings of the Celebration Bowl. Let's talk about it. The Celebration Bowl has been played seven times, right? Seven times. North Carolina Central won it last year, 2022. <gasps> South Carolina State won it the year before in 2021. And then Grambling won it one year. They're the only SWAC team to win the Celebration Bowl. The other four times out of those seven, North Carolina A&T won the Celebration Bowl. North Carolina A&T were the kings of the MEAC before they left. North Carolina A&T are still the kings of the Celebration Bowl until someone surpasses them with more than four wins. Nobody else has more than one. Nobody, Everybody else just has one. They have four. So they have a dominant football program. They have a really, really good football team. They also, like Howard and like some of the other HBCUs we've mentioned, they have alumni everywhere. North Carolina A&T is the largest HBCU in the country. North Carolina A&T has a dominant football program. North Carolina A&T is no longer a part of the MEAC, and so therefore they would be a worthy and viable and opponent in this game. You know they're going to come with a loaded team. You know their fans are going to travel, and it's going to give them a chance to get back into the mix. Just like I spoke about with Hampton, North Carolina A&T, albeit as great and as big as they are, they're very big, very prominent, very well-known, they kind of missed out a little bit on some of this renaissance that's taking place with the MEAC and some of this renaissance that's taking place with the SWAC. They missed out on that just simply by conference affiliation. They're no longer a part of the MEAC. And so to get their name back in the mix and to remind everybody that, <laughs> you know, the Celebration Bowl thing, yeah, we've been doing that. We, we, we've been winning those things. The thing that y'all trying to win, Jackson State, yeah, we done did that a few times. Been there, done that, bought that T-shirt four times to be exact. This would be the ultimate bragging rights type of game because you know nobody talks better than the JSU fans. Nobody talks more and talks heavier than those in, in Jackson, Mississippi. But maybe the Aggies can get in there in the action because they, they have history on their side. They have reputation on their side. And this would be an amazing, amazing showcase for them to go against a SWAC school to prove who is really the big dog. I would love, love, love to see North Carolina A&T, a very realistic opponent, a very well-traveled opponent, a very historical opponent, and a very, very good football team be a part of the rent, you know, renovation of the Orange Blossom Classic. North Carolina A&T, the Aggies, I think that would be the perfect matchup. I gave you my three, Hampton, Howard, but the number one, Component the number one team that I would love to see in the new rendition of the Orange Blossom Classic starting in 2024 would be the North Carolina AT Aggies. Love to see it. Would love to see them go three straight years against Jackson State.
That's just my thoughts. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Who would you want to see in the new version of the Orange Blossom Classic? Y'all see who my three are, but the number one is North Carolina a &T. My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. This is the Victor Formation Sports Show right here on Jeff Lightsey Jr. YouTube, Facebook, wherever you get your content. Do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up button. Like, share, subscribe, and the notification bell because we upload all the time. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at jlightsey7. That is on Instagram and Twitter at jlightsey7. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace.